Oh, oh look at it. Oh, it speeds up everything. Look how fast. Oh my gosh. <laughs> look how fast everything is going through. <laughs> look at him go. <laughs> Hey guys, Sethan in here, back for another episode of TerraTech. Thank you guys so much for all your subs, likes, and comments on the videos. I do appreciate it so much. We had a bunch of new subscribers this week. We had Franz Virge, Din Javel, Jason Wong, Joseph Helms, Jake Winner, Redrims, Namarok, Reese Hicks, Edgeman, Scott Thatcher, Sammy Kamel, Red Cliff, JW Claborn, Menami, Jeff, F. Tech Fusion, Mr. T-Man, Rosario, Bono, Ernestine, Hepburn, and Kim W. Those were the ones that are publicly visible. And then we had a bunch of great comments as well. We had comments from Zed Yes. He gave a lot of great detail on some fixes, so be sure to go back and read those if you're playing along, and I'll try to address those ones in future videos. Chris had a great, uh, so Chris, our subscriber, had a lot of great comments as well. He mentioned anchoring in the build mode is much easier uh, for text as well as some other comments. Make sure to read those if you're interested. And Mohammed and Jake Winter also mentioned that they were interested in seeing some giant text, which I might do in the future. And to Slime Dude, I'm glad to see that you were able to get download the text from the forums and I can't wait to see your text on the forums as well that'll be neat we have dragon hearted cs slash slash jack skeptic skyth midnight slayer that is one long name so he's new to the channel so welcome and then we had jason wang who is uh, talked about the rocket launcher position which I need to go back and fix my other texts at a later date and then we had Dionix who talked about the havoc shield he gave a lot of great pointers about that and then we have Squaw81, Beast Mode 2.0, and Rosario Bono and Kim W, who have commented on some videos as well. Appreciate those comments, guys. I do read them. I enjoy them. Thank you guys for posting them. And then also, Zed Yes mentioned something very important, guys. Something to put on your radar. He mentioned that 0.7.8 is coming out very soon, so we have to back up your games and your decks. So that's really good advice. Make sure you guys do that. I'm going to do that as well before 0.78 comes out. That's awesome. Okay guys, I'm here in the unstable build of TerraTech. I've been resisting going to the unstable build in TerraTech for a long time because I'd like to be surprised when the objects are released for the first time. But I had a crazy amount of requests for using the pacemaker. And the pacemaker currently right now is in the experimental branch. And there it is, the pacemaker, EXP pacemaker. So attach this block to a manufacturing base to slow down or speed up its rate of production. Hold down the right mouse button to select speeds controls. So a lot of you asked to put the pacemaker on this factory. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do that now. I'm going to see what the pacemaker will do and if it will help us and how things will go. So I'm guessing, my thoughts are the pacemaker will only work for one one stream of conveyor belts. So that's my guess. Let's put one down. Let's just see. So we have the choice of pausing. Uh, which had no effect. Uh, slow motion. Normal speed. Or turbo speed. And nothing is happening. I don't know if that's because... Uh, if the conveyor belts will actually change. I thought they would, but maybe they don't. I thought the conveyor belts would change but it looks like they're not so let's just try to uh, scrap some blocks we'll just try as a scrap we should just scrap some resources I guess let's just try that we'll just see I thought the conveyor belt speed would change but it doesn't seem to be uh, let's see will this one get chosen oh oh look at oh it speeds up everything Look how fast, oh my gosh. <laughs> Look how fast everything is going through. <laughs> Look at him go. <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> What's going on? Oh, so it doesn't, it affects everything it looks like? If I go slow, look how slow they go. Let's go normal speed. Is there normal speed? Pause, everything stops, that's so cool. And turbo speed. Look at him go. <laughs> okay. Okay, here I am back with a whole pile of resources. Let's see this go. Kind of speeds up everything. I thought it would just speed up the track, but look at this. Let's see if anything gets by. Oh no, so you only ever need one refinery. Of these Hawkeye refineries now, so you only ever need one. 
on each path. So that's good to know. Why could it just go through? <laughs> this is crazy. I gotta switch to my other guy because he can see a little bit better. Look at them go through all those lines. <laughs> that's pretty cool. It's like watching it fast forward. Look at them go. Wow. <laughs> Let's see if we can't make some of these blades that I was having trouble with. Let's craft a bunch of these. I might need some resources though. I don't have everything, do I? Look how fast things are going. <laughs> oh, in the loop. Everything's coming back. If it got passed the first time around. Uh, okay, I need some more resources of everything. So let's let's scrap a whole bunch of stuff. Where this is pretty crazy. That, that pacemaker is going to make a huge difference in the world. Look at this stuff go. <laughs> this is crazy. That's crazy. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, here we go. Gotta scrap. Let's, why are we scrapping the little stuff? Let's scrap the big stuff. One giant iridium. One Fibron block, one Ignean, one Celestian. Oh, 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 some lag. No, no, you're clicking stuff to things. No! So we should have more than every silo can hold <laughs> coming in. Now these guys are just going off the refined area, which is fine. That's what it was built for. So now I have six component factories on each line. Look how fast that goes through. <laughs> six component factories on each line should allow it to get all the parts it needs for that Proxima Dart. Let's see if it gets hung up or not. Huh. Did it not work? Did not work. Hmm. So, for some reason it can't do the Proxima Dark on its own. Don't know why. But, let's... We'll make something a little simpler then, I guess. I was hoping having the six component factories would solve that. It does not seem to solve it, so it always seems to get stuck on the Proxima Dark. Once it does these first four components, then for whatever reason it can't do the last component without some help. And I'm not sure why that is the case. So one, two, three, four, five. Unless you just need a lot of components everywhere, maybe that's the case. I'm not sure. Let's make something a little simpler. We'll just start making something repeatedly. Here, just so we can see some stuff happening. Okay, it looks like anything with uh, three or less components works okay. Okay, here's three components for the tire track. Let's do that one repeatedly and see what happens. Here we go. We have our first uh, blocked lines. We've got two blocked lines now. Oh, I forgot. I only put that on Plumbia. That's why. This is only stuck to Plumbia. I should make this everything that should relieve the pr pressure. So that should relieve the pressure from down the line there. I think that'll be good. That'll get everything to move again. So I forgot I left a couple of those filters on Plumbia only, so that's why they weren't relieving some of the pressure. So we'll see. That should solve all the problems. Look at the money coming in now. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Yeah, I think this is good. The, uh, this little guy here, the pacemaker, it looks like it works for the entire base. I would have thought it was just a section of track. Which would have made more sense to me, I think. Because if it's just one section of track, then you could spend... Change the speed of it. But it seems to change the speed of everything, which is pretty awesome too. So even the pace of the cannon fire sped up quite a lot, which is awesome. Look at this, I got tons of resources still. Things coming down the center are still okay. So there's no real backlog. I just have forgotten to turn off those two filters. Or to allow everything on those filters which relieves any of the pressure down the center. And so that should be much more, much better. 
So eventually this stuff will... Well, eventually it'll all go through, because eventually it'll loop back again. Look at this going here. This, this uh, section here is a lot better, so every time I have got uh, tracks that merge together, I decided to put a silo instead, so that way you don't have to worry about the priority of which track gets to go first. Looks like they're just coming right through the, <laughs> the center one though, but that's okay. I guess, I guess we can live with that. This is pretty cool. And anything that comes back around the second time is not a big deal either. So that's pretty good. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's really cool. So I like the pacemaker a lot. I've been avoiding using the unstable branch for quite a while, just because I just like to be surprised when when they actually come up with that pacemaker. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> That's cool. Okay, I'm going to save this game. I'll revert back to the stable branch, and then I've got another suggestion from a subscriber that I'm going to try to try to do. That's pretty cool. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Okay guys, here I am in sandbox mode once again. I was going to build these things in story mode, but as some people noted, it's starting to get a little too framey in that mode there in story mode. So what I'm going to do is build things in sandbox mode. And then once things are built, I'll move them over to the campaign or story mode. That's what I think I'm going to do. Jake Winner had a great idea that I really want to do. So he was really interested in seeing, you know, scrapping a bunch of items, but he also mentioned what if you could build a system in which you could just scrap a whole pile of items, go away and come back and everything would be stored into the compressed resource blocks on the SCU. So I think that's what I'm going to try to do. I think I'm going to make a giant, the goal is anyway, to make a giant store or a scrapyard, giant scrapyard that is self-sufficient. So we'll convert them all automatically into storage blocks. We need 11 fabricators and they're just going to be constantly saying, uh, fabricating one type of block each. Then we're also going to need to send all those items to, or the um, components. We're gonna have to send components automatically to sell as well. So we'll need an area to sell components. We'll need an area to, to refine. And then we'll also need an area to move towards the continual fabrication of those of those resource blocks. All right, guys, I think I've got a working scrapyard here. Should be okay. Essentially, I've got four sets of scrappers all around. So I think the circumferences are good for the most part. I think they have a good access to everything in the center here. And then essentially everything will go up and get refined since these Hawkeye refineries only take one step. It shouldn't produce any backlog, I don't think. And everything goes around one direction. The only problem I think is going to be this where you've got everything going on one track towards all these refineries. So I don't think that's very efficient. Yeah, so I debate about, again, I debate whether I should sort them first, maybe, but we'll try this out. We're just going to see if this, this will work first. This is the pilot test, uh, test 001 of the scrapyard facility. Let's just uh, test, start uh, some scrapping some weird stuff in here. We'll just scrap kind of little bits of everything. Why is nothing here happening? What is going on down here as well? There's some problem. Why aren't these guys moving, actually? What is going down on there? What is going on down there? Here? All right, guys, I'm back. I made a few corrections. Uh, so basically, for some reason, these three units were actually fastened to the ground and not to the conveyor belt system. So any resources coming on here, it would just stop at a certain point. And I didn't realize what, but apparently, even though the looked like the conveyor belts were touching, apparently they were actually not touching, which is very deceiving, but I think that's what caused that problem and they're going through now. I also added essentially a component filter for each of the silos here. So we should be selling off all the components that go in now at this point. 
And so now we would set each one of these 11 factories to build our resources continually. So, so one for Columbia. What's next? Elastic. Let's do Iridium. There we go. Okay. So in theory, if each one of these are just crafting infinite number of those guys, then you should be able to scrap 100 items or more. Just scrap all your items. And they should just keep making those blocks. So you could basically scrap everything, go away, and come back and have a pile of resources. And you can just put an SEU or something in there. So once again, I'm just going to pile in a whole bunch of resources. So Chris mentioned, uh, Chris mentioned one of the subscribers. He said that for some reason the magnets don't work on the actual magnet, uh, scrapping units, right? So if I were to put a magnet down, if I put a magnet on, say this guy, and then I were to drop something on, it sticks to the magnet. Whoops. If I am close enough to the magnet, right? Oh, there you go. So it sticks to the magnet and doesn't get scrapped. It doesn't end up going in the scrapper. But he did mention you could actually put it on a separate structure. So if you put the magnet on a separate structure and then it sticks to the magnet, it should get zerped. Yeah, there, just got zerped to another unit. So you could actually put magnets in the center here if things are flying away too far. So you could put some magnets here. Things will just stick to the magnets. As long as they're not part of the same facility, then they will get uh, zerped into the scrap here. So that's great. Thanks so much for that comment, Chris. That was really insightful. <laughs> okay, I've got a few, <laughs> a few terminals in there getting scrapped. Some are still, that's quite a few. So I'm pretty sure there's like a hundred of something in there anyway. But let's take a look what's happening here. So what's interesting is some things aren't coming on this thing here. Our Titanite is right there, but it's not getting pulled on the track. And our Carbius is also not getting pulled. And nothing is getting pulled, apparently. Why is that? Did this track it? So let's just try. We'll throw on a five run chunk here manually. Just want to see if it's not getting collected. It's like it can't get by these areas, maybe? Okay, it looks like I just needed to add those filters. I thought the conveyor belt would just continue on if it didn't get called by one machine. I thought I could go by one of those corners, but it looks like it couldn't, so I just needed to add the filters. And I could even do maybe... I wonder if I should set these filters even. Would that do anything useful? Okay, guys, I think I sorted out the mess. Basically, I had to change all the filters to their respective resources. It makes it a little hard to see though, so I probably should have maybe tried to stagger some things. It's also not very efficient, it looks like. Uh, things just take a long time to get anywhere, it looks like. So you're probably better off sorting elements before they get to these guys, I guess. Oh, two, we got some guys unrefined. Okay, it's a disaster. Okay. Uh, the super scrapyard version one complete failure <laughs> that was disastrous huh here we are guys back at attempt number two for the scrapyard i think this time it's a lot better this time for sure i think so essentially i think this is the best way to stop make sure that the resources go a certain direction is to cap off the end of a conveyor so if you cap off the end of a conveyor with each of these filter arrows. That seems to be the best way to actually make sure that none of your resources get by or unrefined resources get by. So in this case, I have them going to each track coming in has their own refinery. So it won't matter if there's a backup in the refineries or not, because it'll just stop everything else from coming in. So that's fine. I probably only needed two refineries, but then I decided to give every track its own refinery instead. All the components are going off to just be sold. So they're just going off to the cannons. Then I have all the tracks merging again. So I do the same idea. Every time I have three tracks merging, I kind of put them on their own silos. This really helps with the backlog. Essentially, 
Everything comes in onto its own silo. They all merge onto one silo. And they go around the track and get filtered. I just put on some of these mini silos, I think, because they should be constantly getting uh, t taken off. The silo should be constantly being emptied. So there's no real need to have a great big silo, I don't think, on these particular cases. But if anything gets by because of the rule three, then they'll get put on this other big silo and then it'll get sent around the track again a second time or third time, however many times it takes. So this time it should be good to go. So here we are, pilot. This is test number 30717189, something like that. I don't know. We kind of lost track of all our test numbers. We're basically going to just, uh, well, let's get some unrefined stuff. So I know these ones provide unrefined blocks. So on the refined piles, getting kind of stacked up again, doesn't matter if if this silo gets full, it doesn't matter. It'll just stop all the unrefined stuff from coming in until there's a gap in the system. So it should be fine. We've got lots of rubber stuff coming in. All right, guys, I think it's working great. Everything is coming in. All right, it takes a little while for everything to get off the silo and go around, but it's doing pretty good, actually. There is not even any problem of three in this case for some reason. I don't know why. So right here, there doesn't seem to be the problem of three happening. So it's not even looping around, which is fantastic. Things are working great. This is awesome. I think this turned out better than I thought it would. So ideally you just put an S uh, storage SCU case out here to collect them. I thought it'd just be fun to let them stack up out here just to see how many we actually get of some things. I think that's going to be it for today, guys. Thanks so much for coming to hang out with me. I appreciate all the subs, likes, and the comments that you guys leave. I really do appreciate that so much. So on behalf of Jake Winter, that just wanted to see what it looked like to scrap 100 items, I'm going to just let this run. And Jake, you can just enjoy the scrapping of 100 items. <laughs> okay, see you guys again real soon. Take care. Have a good day. Bye-bye.